Ito po si RCD. Happy Easter po! Takot talaga! Happy Easter! Buhay si Jesus! At alam niyo po, kami natutuwa sapagat napakarami ninyo. Almost 70,000 ang nanunood sa atin at kasama natin sa loob ng almost 2 to 3 weeks. Last week po, may natanggap si Ars Binasulat. Ibabahagi namin sa inyo. At alam niyo po ano naman ang sulat? Ito po ay patungkol sa isang COVID patient na sa tulong ni Jesus, sa dasal natin, naku po, buhay na buhay ngayon at kakausapin tayo. Nakakalungkot lang po. Nakakalungkot. Sa pag ilang po sa atin ay tilay linalait. Ayaw natin makasama at makatang tawagan laang, inspire them, pray for them, assure them that there is God. Alam niyo po, nakakalungkot sapagkat ilan sa atin tilay itong mga tao, itong COVID patient ay ostracized. Walang, parang walang pakialam tayo. Tilay family nila. Sila mismo nasasaktan. Napakahirap na po nga ang tinatawag na COVID na virus. Tayo pa din ay kumakalat ng virus of rejection. Kung kaya po, hayaan nyo na manood ka tayong lahat ngayon at marinig natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos sa pumagitan ng isang taong ito. Alam niyo po kung sino siya? Ipapakilala ko sa inyo. Siya si Kim Perkulesa. Halip po kayo. Pakinggan nyo, maluod tayo sa sasabihin sa atin. Halip po kayo. Hi, uh, my name is Kim Wolper Coleza, and for those of you who haven't heard the news yet, I am one of the lucky and blessed survivors of the COVID-19 virus. And what I'm about to share and read to you was my journey and experience in this hard-fought battle that I had to endure, but eventually won. So without further ado, this was my experience. It was just a typical day when suddenly I felt a bit under the weather. I was hoping it would go away after I took my meds, but as the days progressed, the fever started to kick in. Being fully aware of the COVID-19 crisis, I became paranoid, so I decided to go straight to the hospital. I was very cautious and did my best not to interact with anyone in my head, it was just a fever, but I didn't want to take any chances. After arriving at the hospital and some tests were conducted, I was admitted. During this time, I was also tested for the virus. And after three days in confinement, I finally recovered from the fever and did not have any other symptoms pointing towards the virus. So they released me and I was instructed to stay home and to not interact with other people under any circumstances. A week went by of being alone in my room. It was extremely hot and the simple cough or sneeze brought out my anxiety. Spending a lot of time by myself made me question and ponder if I did really have the virus. And after days of suspension, I got the call saying that I was indeed positive for the deadly virus responsible for killing thousands and thousands of people all around the world. Um, it was the worst day of my life. I cried, had trouble breathing, and experienced multiple panic attacks. I locked myself in my room, made sure not to interact, talk, or let alone just breathe in front of other people. I was told that I would be picked up from home and will be brought to the hospital to be isolated. 
So I waited. Not even an hour after the call, rumors started to spread. My name started circulating all over social media. News got out that I was officially patient number four, and due to the panic that it caused, false information was added onto the story and caused a lot of problems for my family, relatives, and friends. My family was discriminated and talked about throughout the whole province. Some of them were even denied the right to work just because we shared the same last name, even if I hadn't been in contact with them for months. People started looking at them differently and there were a few altercations that caused problems to their own families as well. I couldn't believe how much trouble I caused just because I was unfortunate enough to be infected. Anxiety and panic attacks came more frequently after finding out about how much I was affecting the people. And the thought of spending my last days without my family and friends in a room I couldn't even call home terrified me. Even more so knowing that on the outside of these walls, people were blaming me for the spread of the virus in Batangas, saying I had purposely gone out, falsely stating that I had the nerve to attend a party, when in truth I had been in quarantine for the past few weeks. A few hours later, I was picked up by some health officials from the hospital who kindly escorted me to the hospital room for isolation. At this point, they were the first people I had come into contact with after my release from the hospital. And no, I did not run away or go into hiding like some people had started to spread through their chats, nor did I get picked up by a SWAT team. Eventually, when I was in the hospital, as depressing as it was, I couldn't complain because my family and friends kept in touch with me every day. I deactivated my Facebook account and focused more on recovering. I wanted to avoid the heinous comments that people were leaving on official announcement posts about me because I knew it would only cause me stress. I owed it to everyone who cared for me that I recover. Only the opinions of my family, relatives, and closest friends mattered, and it was exactly the source of strength that I needed. I rekindled my faith with God, prayed every day, and had some time to reflect on my actions and my life in general. I focused so much on recovering that they started getting a bit easier. I talked to my friends and family throughout the days and shared laughters and stories. I got to rewatch and finish some of my favorite TV series and even sang my heart out with my ukulele. I made good friends with Ati Kath, my nurse, Dr. JB, who was in charge of taking care of me, and Ati Christi, who checked on me every day. I admired their hard work. Their job was tough. Being exposed to patients who had the disease, always at risk, and they couldn't even go home to their families because they were tasked to take care of people like me. Looking back at everything now, I truly believe that the presence and love of my family and friends, the unwavering support of the doctors and nurses, and my faith in God is what really saved me. I was tested a few more times, ate all the nutritious food, drank my meds, exercised to make my body stronger. I did everything that the doctors and nurses wanted me to do and it had its struggles, but I soldiered through it. And it was all worth it in the end. All the prayers of the people who cared for me were answered. The hard work of the doctors and nurses bore fruit. I recovered from the virus. And up until now, health officials and the government have been very kind to me and have provided me with everything that I need to stay healthy. Now, I want to use this message to enlighten people to please empathize and respect other people's privacy. 
despite all the false information and rumors, I did not hold a grudge against anyone who spread false information. My only concern was that it affected the lives of the people I cared about. It was bad enough that my reputation was tainted, but it also affected others who shouldn't have been involved in the first place. I can honestly say that the negative energy towards me was one of the biggest obstacles I had to face while recovering. So um, be kind to others. There are other patients out there who are still fighting for their lives, trying to recover. Spreading rumors and talking about them isn't going to help. In fact, it will only affect their mental health and will hinder their chances of having a fast recovery. You will not gain anything on taking part of the gossip and in knowing a struggling patient's name. Yeah. Just like me, they were just unlucky to have gotten the virus. And even if you had no ill intentions and you just took part in spreading awareness, it's still punishable by law. So think before you act because bad decisions have bad repercussions that can ruin your life or worse, someone else's life without you knowing. Just like my best friend said, fight the virus, not the people. Be kind to them and include them in your prayers for their fast recovery. Thousands and thousands of people are dying and struggling all around the world. This is the time to show what humanity is all about support each other and spread kindness because we are all affected by this. This too will pass and we will come out stronger than ever. I hope and pray that you, whoever is reading or watching this, to stay healthy and not go through what I experienced. Now I want to thank all the people who helped me and supported me. Words aren't enough to express how grateful I am for the support that you provided me over the past few weeks. To Dr. J. Davier, thank you for checking up on me every time and making sure that I'm okay, and for making sure that I was provided with adequate care. To Dr. J. B. Berberabe, probably the coolest doctor that I have ever met. Thank you for making it as easy as possible to go through this heartbreaking situation. You made everything bearable. To Nurse Kath Atikath, my favorite nurse who provided me with everything that I needed and for keeping me company. Along with Dr. JB, I appreciate the sacrifices that you guys made for patients like me. You guys worked 24-7 and couldn't go home to your families. Thank you, thank you for risking your lives to save mine. To Ate Christi, thank you for keeping in touch with me and my family. Dr. Testorio for spearheading the nurses and staff, providing support for me and reassuring that my family that I am well taken care of. To Mark Justin Alvarez, Mitch Benolo, Princess Noel Cuenca, and to all the staff of the Batangas Medical Center. I'm really grateful for everything that you've done for me. Thank you. To the city health officials, Dr. Barion, Dr. Ian Kalingasen, and all the other doctors that helped me get through with the situation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Instructing me of the protocols and for the continuous support along with all the nurses that did and are still doing their best to provide me with everything that I need. Also, a huge thank you for Mayor Beverly Rose de Macuha and Secretary to the Mayor, Attorney Reginald de Macuha, for the full support that you have given me in this battle. Up until now, the unwavering support that you have given me shows your love and service to our city. And I would also like to express my sincerest gratitude and appreciation to those people who unceasingly supported me and helped me spiritually by always including my fast recovery in their mass intentions and personal prayers, especially Archbishop Gilbert A. Garcera, Father Jason T. Siapko, and Father Russell B. Matuloy. 
to my friends and family, the outpouring love and support I received not only during this time of darkness, but throughout my life means the world to me. While we may not get to choose our family, we get to choose how much we love them. You've all taught me to never back down and take the world by storm. The love of a family extends outside of the walls of our home and you've proven me and shown me that this love is everywhere all the time and it never fades. I love you all so much. And most importantly, to all the patients out there who are still struggling and fighting for their lives, be strong, have faith in God, and put your trust in the doctors and nurses that are doing their best to nurse you back to recovery. I assure you, things will get better. Just don't give up. I'm still praying for those who are still suffering and will continue to pray until every one of us are perfectly cured. Do not listen to all the negativity that will bring you down and just focus on yourself. There are people out there who deeply care about you, waiting for you to come home and recover from this. You can do this. Don't give up.